Good morning, guys. It is January 23rd, 2022, and it's about 6-ish in the morning. Um, and I want to do a little disclosure. Um, because of the content of today's video, I want to say if you have kids and you don't want them to hear kind of explicit stuff, um, I would recommend them not watching this video. I give you guys the verses, the chapter, the verses, for a reason. Because some of this stuff gets a little hinky. And I told you that in the beginning of this series that sometimes it's going to get real. And today is one of those days. Um, so, I want to do a little recap. Not because I'm standing up for Noah, but because of the fact that I want to kind of put this in perspective. I want to put this in perspective that the text shows us. So in the beginning of the story of Noah. Now he's a real person. His family, real people. They're really going through this. This is a real time in their lives. And your boy Noah is told by God to build an ark. Well, it took Noah some time to build this ark. It wasn't instantaneous. So, people around him saw what he was doing. And they probably called him crazy. They've never seen rain. They have no idea what a flood is. And so, as he's building this ark and explaining to people, this is what's going to happen. God's going to fill the earth with water and he's going to destroy every living thing. They're probably like, Noah, you're nuts. Well... Fast forward a little bit, and the ark is done. Noah, his family, his, his, more specifically his wife, his kids, and their wives get onto the ark. All these animals get onto the ark. God shuts the door. Now, when God shuts a door, the door can't be reopened. So anything outside the ark, it's been destined to be destroyed. Anything inside the ark is destined to be saved. Now, Noah has to wait seven days. In this boat, the anticipation, something's going to happen. All of a sudden, one day, the rain starts to fall. The flood waters start to rise up from the ground. And it doesn't explicitly say, but I feel confident enough to say that the people and the animals that were outside the ark weren't just sitting there going well it's the flood no they were probably running for higher ground they were probably instinctually trying to get to a point to where they were going to be safe and that's not the case so as the the water is rising and Noah and his family and the animals on the ark are floating above this water and are safe. There are people and animals all around them drowning. Moment by moment, second by second. And Noah's probably watching this. He's probably hearing it. He's probably watching it. He's probably, you know, hearing the pounding of the rain and... All of this stuff. And maybe survivor's guilt steps in. Now, survivor's guilt is a real thing. And, and if you suffer from that, God wants to help you. He does. And I'm not diminishing that at all. But I'm just trying to put it into perspective that... I don't know about you, but if I was in Noah's position, I'd be like, why me? I know, you know, no one knows that God said because he was righteous. But still, the idea of me being safe and others not, that can weigh on a person. And Noah is just that, a person. So with the trauma of watching this, the trauma of hearing this, the, the, the guilt, 
of this and and the only way I can put this into perspective of 2022 is we hear about it some people when they get COVID are like why am I surviving and why is someone else dying you know when when a big illness hits and and one person survives from the illness and another person doesn't that's when survivor guilt set, sets in and if there's a big traumatic event, like a shooting or whatever, the same thing happens. The person sits there and says, why me and not why, why not them? So this is a real moment in Noah's life. And I want us to understand that, yes, God says Noah is righteous. And, and God says that Noah walks with God but Noah is also a person Noah is also human and Noah also was born with the same sin that Adam and Eve were cursed with so I wanted to bring that into perspective because of what's about to happen and I wanted to bring that into perspective because we all go through what Noah's about to go through. Whatever side of the spectrum you're on, this happens to each of us in one way or another. So I'm going to start reading Genesis chapter 9, verse 20, through Genesis chapter 9, verse 22. And I want us to really sit back not judge but I want us to look at what Noah's going through and I want us to really think about it so I'm starting in Genesis chapter 9 verse 20 after the flood Noah began to cultivate the ground and he planted a vineyard one day he drank some wine he had made and became drunk and lay naked in his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father was naked and went outside and told his brothers. Your boy Noah got drunk. <laughs> Let's just put it right there. Now, I want to step back for a second because the first part of this says that Noah began to cultivate the ground. He began to plant vineyards. He began to do all that stuff. And that in itself is not bad. And neither is wine. Wine in itself is not a bad thing. I mean, Jesus turns water into wine. The problem is, is in this moment, and again, it doesn't explicitly say it here, but I know from my own life, knowing that there's something that can numb the pain and numb what just happened, the trauma that he just endured, he turned to this wine and then and got drunk. Now, I don't know about you, but I've faced many addictions in my life. Whether it was alcohol and drugs, food, spending money, we all as humans look for something, something quick to make us feel better. Trauma is real. PTSD is real. I suffer from it. I've been through a lot of trauma in my life. Been through a lot of pain in my life. And I've turned to things like alcohol to try to numb it to try to run away from the pain that I was feeling, from the feelings that I was going through, from the emotion, from the just complete and utter hurt that I was going through. Thankfully, even before I came to God, he relieved me of that. But I still, even after even after dealing with my drug and alcohol problem, my drug and alcohol addiction, I turned to food because I could control it. I could control food. 
whether I ate too much or I ate too little, that's what I could control. So we run to these things that are not innately bad. Wine is not innately bad. It's how Noah used it. Now on the flip side, we have Ham, his son, who instead of trying to help his father, seeing that his father was suffering from something, he ran out and told his brothers all about it. He didn't try to clothe him. He didn't try to help him in any way. He ran. And he said, Dad's naked. He's drunk. He's naked. How many of us have done that also? And, and this is where we need to be real with ourselves. Be real with God. How many of us have sat there and instead of trying to help someone, we judge them? Oh, well, they did this. This is... It's a sin. They did this. Look, look, look. Look at what they did. I've been a victim of that. And I've probably done that too. We do that. Because again, human nature is sinful. Human nature is spiteful and angry. And Ham himself was probably going through stuff too but instead of relying on god the way noah and ham were supposed to they turned one to trying to mask the pain the other to trying to mock and to hurt and to cut down the very person who did something to help them so this is the real part this is the raw part God never stated that Noah was perfect, ever. God knew that Noah was going to get drunk. God knew that Noah was still sinful. We all are. But God also knew Noah's heart. God knew that Noah wanted so badly to walk with him. We're going to see tomorrow what his other kids do what Noah's other children do but I want to look at this part today and I want you to get real with God and get real with yourself where is it that you're still holding on to something of the world to make you feel better where's that thing that you're saying hey if I just get this I'm going to feel so much better None of that ever happens. We never feel better. We may instantaneously for a moment. And I'm not saying everyone turns to drugs and alcohol, but it could be anything. It could be sex. It could be money. It could be power. It could be prestige. Anything. Anything like that is when we turn something from being something that's just there like money, money is just there. It's not good nor evil. But when we use it and we idolize it and we say, this is the thing that's going to make me happy. That's not the case. That's not the truth. But where is it that you're still holding on to that? And why? That's the other part of this. The other part of this that God wants you to be honest about. And maybe you know and maybe... You don't fully understand, and that's okay. But why are you turning to that thing? Why did Noah turn to wine to get drunk? Here's my question. In all of this, do you see the hope? God could have taken this part out. Now, the Bible is God-breathed. Man written, but God breathed. God could have taken this part out and just ended it right at the rainbow, but he didn't. He didn't because he wanted us to see that these people were real. These people were just as sinful as we are. But God knew their heart, and he knows ours. And God wants us to understand that he still loved Noah. 
he still, even knowing what Noah was going to do at the end, even knowing that he was going to do this, he was going to drink, and he was going to get mocked by his son, even knowing that, God chose Noah. Even knowing your story, even though knowing what you did and what you will do, God still chose you because he loves you. Jesus still chose to die on the cross for your sins because he loves you. This brings me such hope. This brings me hope because I know I don't have to be perfect. I don't. It's impossible. For us to be perfect is impossible. But God still loves us. Even though we're imperfect. Even though we're gonna mess up. He loves us. So where's the part that you're still struggling with? And where's the things in your life, the trauma, the pain? Where is it that you can turn to God and say, I need help with this. I need help. And sometimes it's going to a counselor. Sometimes it's medication to deal with the pain. A medication that's, that's prescribed. And that's okay. That's, that's, those are tools that God gave us. So do not be ashamed of using them. I use both of those things. But also remember to turn to God and turn to the community that's around you and be honest. I hope you guys today have a wonderful day. And I hope today you see Jesus in all you do. And you see the hope that God can still use you because he loves you. I hope you see that today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.